Welcome to another episode of the Mitsubishi 3000 GT restoration video. In this episode we'll be installing new crankshaft and cam seals, a water pump, timing belt, and pulley. We'll start by lubing each seal with dielectric grease and seating each seal with a seal installation tool. As you can see, I was able to push in the crank seal in with my hand. When it came time to install the cam seals, I went into my seal installation toolkit to come up with the right combination of seal press adapters. Using the bolts that secure the camshaft sprockets, I use one of these bolts with the press adapters to press in each cam seal. I have to make sure that each seal is seated all the way in. Seals are considered bottomed out when there's too much resistance encountered when twisting the cam bolt against the press adapters. Since the cams in the rear protrude a little longer than the fronts, I had to use longer seal press adapters. Now we'll clean up the water pump mating surfaces. We use razor blades for scraping off leftover water pump gasket material combined with a rotary wire brush. Using compressed air and brake clean, we cleaned up the surrounding areas of oil and dirt residue. Now back to the water pump backing plate. We unbolted the backing plate and began scraping off the old gasket material with a razor blade attached to a razor blade holder. When most of the gasket residue was scraped off, we completed the cleaning using a rotary wire brush. Before combining the new water pump with the water pump backing plate, I applied red RTV sealant to the water pump's mating surfaces with my index finger. I did this to keep the coating layer light and to ensure complete coverage. The new gasket was then mounted and a light coat of RTV applied. Now some people may argue that RTV is not needed, but what I found is that the RTV will provide a long lasting life of the water pump, leak free seal, and also the gasket will not stick to the matting surfaces when the water pump is replaced again. After the backing plate has been attached to the new water pump, we then applied RTV to the surfaces where the pump connects to the engine block. A light coat of dielectric grease was applied to the pump's coolant supply port and a new o-ring fitted over the engine block coolant supply water pump connection pipe. Now that the pump is ready to be bolted onto the engine block. We cleaned up the small rusted timing belt cover that sits above the water pump and applied a light coat of aluminized paint that has a corrosion inhibitor. To ease installation of the new belt with respect to belt alignment, we transferred the paint alignment marks from the old belt to the new belt.
Using the vise, we compressed and recessed the timing belt tensioner pin and held it in place with a compression release pin, which most people call a grenade pin. You can also use a drill bit as a substitute. Afterwards, the tensioner can be bolted back onto the engine block. We used the same pulley holder tool from episode 2 to bolt the cam sprockets back onto the camshaft. Now that the new timing belt idler pulley and tensioner pulley bracket were bolted back onto the block. Before mounting on the new belt, we used leftover 12 mm long bolts to prevent the cam sprockets from jumping away from the top dead center alignment position. It appears that Mitsubishi provided these bolt holes in the engine block for the purpose of easing belt installation. With this setup, there's no need to purchase any cam holding or locking tools. We started by installing the belt on the leftmost cam sprocket using the belt's paint mark for alignment. The belt is held in place using plastic clamping tools. The second cam was rocked back until aligned with the second paint mark on the belt. Again, the cam and belt were clamped in place. This procedure was used in the remaining two cams. We reinstalled the crankshaft bolt so that we could turn the crank slightly towards the back cam to ease belt installation. Afterwards, we turned the crank back to its top dead center alignment position and positioned the remainder of the belt over the tensioner pulley. There are two adjustments to be made to the belt tensioner. Using a right angle needle nose plier, loosen the tensioner bolt, position the tips of the plier into the two holes of the pulley, and turn the pulley towards the belt. Apply approximately seven pounds of torque on the pulley against the belt, and tighten the tensioner bolt. Remove all clamps and the 12 millimeter cam movement bolts. Then rock the engine to the right and left approximately 180 degrees to help seat the belt. Then loosen and retension the tensioner pulley. Pull out the grenade pin from the tensioner pulley to complete the belt installation. Thanks for watching and all the stuff that we took out in episode 2 will be reinstalled in episode 4 with new parts.